As I start getting underway, before I want to actually play, I want to investigate some of these, and I realize now, okay, there's more information here than I thought. So this trade for trade, the food, okay, I had to look that up, that's fine. But the birds, remember this is related to a specific species probably, so um, that's what that indicates there. This one and this one are quicker elections, but here again, another birds card. Now, what does that mean? Uh, that means the party with the most food tokens in the species gets a couple extra. So this player is going to be interested in the birds. There's no question. This player may be less interested because he can steal them, but when can he steal them? He can steal them at this time. The grain marker which is the parliamentary election campaign. What happens during the parliamentary election campaign? Yeah, that's a good question. I think that's when you place your actual food down. Um, and during your own turn, you have the chance to play things now. Uh, so we're getting kind of an idea of what people want to do. This one, the zebras. Where are the zebras? They're up here, and they've got a trade. And now here it's a hippo. Um, you get to keep up the two of your food tokens, which is a reason for him to play in the hippos, which is over here. Unfortunately, these particular cards, the images on here don't necessarily match there. Um, what else would I like? You know what would be useful, given that they want to have these kind of comical, interesting images, just to make it a little easier? Um, maybe associate a numeral or something with these. Uh, it is a little hard to find the pictures. Uh, more zebra, and that was a loyalty, correct? No. That was a, geez. Yeah. If you have the most, you get to get food there. This is a loyalty for the snakes, which maybe are here. No, those look like ducks or something. Oh, here are the snakes. <clears throat> he's got trades in that, and he's got this which is, I think, just a victory point, if you can get the presidency. So he's particularly interested in the presidency. Over here, uh-oh, uh that's not what I'd think of. That's not what I thought. So that is the party with the most food tokens on that uh, species gets an extra seat, so he's particularly interested in that. And this one is a blockade. Uh, if he's got the opposition, he can prevent a goal from being passed. Just to give you some ideas. Now, what we do at the beginning is going to be the presidential election. There's bids. And like I said, it's hard for me to tell exactly what I want to bid. So like this guy, he could grab an extra victory point. But you know what? Maybe he doesn't want to play that card at this point in the game. There's no limit to the cards you can hold. And this feels like a game where you kind of want to sandbag your position as much as you can, not get as far along this track as you possibly can. There's no real advantage to it. Like I said, there's nothing, you know, getting your agenda implemented doesn't give you anything with any of the critters. None of them give a shit. <laughs> Or positive or negative whether or not you did that. So uh, it's just a pure victory point type situation. And given that, the best thing to do is to hold as many cards as you can kind of trigger to win the game at once. So this card probably does not want to get played. Otherwise, I would be looking and saying, oh, I really want to play this card. Hmm, I might be willing to bid more for the presidency. Danger, of course, is you might not be able to get the presidency but maybe you can get it early. I don't know. <coughs> Hard to tell. Uh, but I see no reason to believe that that card would be a good choice to play at this point. So what I'm going to do is kind of make the bids for presidency. And 
the way I'm going to do that is for the initial bids, I don't think anybody wants to spend more than five. I don't feel like anybody has a tr particular desire. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll the die and on a six I'll count it as a zero, otherwise the number is their bid. So he's not even bidding for the presidency. He'll have two, and of course this is being done secretly. And we might come up with some modifiers, but I don't see any real reason for it at this point. And this is just to show you how I solo uh, some of these games, where there's something like this. And everybody seems to be bidding two. Who is interested? He bid only one, but... And no bid. Okay. Um, now, I believe it's rounded up. Yeah. So... He's losing his bid, but three people are still in it. Yellow, green, and red. And I'm gonna put their money here. This is the half that they spent. And now, you know, they've already put some money in. They've already spent one each and not gotten anything yet. Uh, is it worth spending six at this point total uh, to get the presidency? I don't know. I doubt it. But I think I'll go with the same kind of role. Actually, with a five, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to modify that role. So we'll see. So he's willing to bid one more. Red. I don't think the presidency is worth all that much. Uh-oh, we got a possible tie here. And he's willing to throw three more in. Okay, what that means is each of these, and they probably should have been two, is gonna spend an extra one because they just lost. Um, and they only spend half of what they bid, but he's gonna spend all of what he bid. So now, and I'm not gonna worry too much about the odds and evens here, uh, although I don't think you'd actually do this. He's got now, the role of president. And that's not one of his play cards. So things could get a little confusing with how I have things set up. That's the presidential election. He immediately gets a victory point though. And that is what's particularly good about it. He's got the potential for playing this one, which maybe he wants to play. Uh, but maybe not. You know, if he looks like he's too far in the lead, he's gonna have trouble making deals. So, I think he'll probably hold that card still. Okay. And now what we do is we move the presidency two spaces forward, and that is, geez, I don't know. I think that's this, the bow tie. So there'll be another election on turn three. And we go on to the parliamentary elections. So, the order of the parliamentary elections is important. The first thing that we check is by seats. Everybody's tied, nobody has any seats yet. So the next thing is who's got the most goals? Well, that's him, and he's allowed to play five plus one extra. He probably does wanna play his five points. So, what's he interested in? Well, he can get elephant, and that's during this phase, he would have to do it right now. He could steal stuff for the elephant. Uh, that doesn't sound terribly interesting. He's not all that interested in anything else. <sighs> I can put three in each of two things. <laughs> I'm gonna put three over here. I'm gonna take my freebie at this point. And then I doubt I'm gonna be able to get this. Why don't I see if I can get the birds for three? Because they're worth less to overcome me. I might get the four bid on that. Maybe. <laughs> okay, now the other players are actually randomized. And what I should have done is I should have uh, randomize the order entirely so that everybody knows what the order is ahead of time. I think it's not going to really matter, but let's see what we get here. 
So player three red is going to be next, and I'm just going to use food markers to indicate who actually gets the positions. There probably should be some kind of seating, uh, player order cards, or you could use these chits the way I'm doing. Blue. Oh, don't draw from there. Uh, now we have black, yellow, and orange. Go to orange. You don't have to worry about how I randomize. It really is just random. Um, it's just what I do is I play things out as... Um, I'll explain it. Um, you know, I roll a die to see which person in order. And if it's... Um, and that's pretty easy until you get down to, say, three. In which case, I go one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, because that e goes into odd even when there's two and stuff like that. And of course, sometimes I play around with different numbers of dice. Okay, so red is the next player who gets to go. Red really wants the hippos. He has, is that loyalty? Yes. So he can keep up to two hippo points on the board. So I definitely want to play two hippo points. And I got three more food that I can distribute to get votes. Well, Zebra, I'm not gonna be able to do anything with the Zebra card right now. So putting it there might not be terribly helpful to me. Oh, uh, I have three additional pieces after I play those. So I can't take either of those. So I'm gonna throw myself in Actually, I'm going to put three here. And I'm going to put two in with the monkeys. Eh. Why don't we put them in with the zebra? Because we have the capacity. Well, those aren't going to stay at the zebra. Screw that. Uh, let's put them in with there. Uh, that way we're liable to get who votes off of them? Maybe. We're not sure. That makes blue next. Blue takes a look. Uh, they have a loyalty on the snakes. Which means two in the snake seems like a safe bid. I could grab zebra, but nobody's in zebra. Hmm. Oh, but this is in a different phase. Oh no, this is, I want to be the most in zebra. Hmm. All right, I'm going to throw three in Zebra. <laughs> uh, just letting my cards dictate what I do. We'll see what it gives me. Okay. For Orange, Orange has... Hey, if I have the most penguins, I get something. What do I get? I get an additional seat. That sounds interesting. Okay. So for penguins, which are up here, well, penguins is very valuable. So far, three seem to be holding it. I put three in penguin, because there aren't, there's only two more players left. And I am going to put Nobody's trying to sleaze anything really cheap. I'm going to put two over here in the elephant house and see what that does me. Yellow. Well, again, some of these players don't have as many tokens total, but getting your bids in seems like a good idea. I can call earlier presidential elections, and that is done later. Um, I'm interested in birds, though. If I have the most birds, I get a bonus. So I could throw four birds in, right? Is that what it's saying? I get two extra food. That's kind of like getting loyalty. If I put four birds in, I would get four points plus the food. But I could just hold that card. Because four will get me the hippos, which are worth six, and I got one left. 
that one left, I can look at the board and say I'm guaranteed an extra vote as long as I throw it in there because there's only one player left after me. So I'm going to do that rather than, you know, maybe try to get a second vote. Now for black, things are particularly interesting. I can make a trade and grab a bird, which is pleasing. But let's see what I can get as my, let's maximize my points because why not? All right, so if I want to maximize my points, what do I do? Well, um, I could put one down there and get two points there. I could get one there, get one point there. I'm just, uh, that gets, that's worth three. That's definitely worth it. So I can grab a lot of second place finishes. It's not particularly to my advantage to do the bird exchange. Although I could get more votes if I do it. But yeah, that doesn't terribly help me. So I'm definitely putting one in here. Okay, that's two points. This isn't worth fighting for, it's too big. This is worth two points. We'll go up there with the penguins. Birds is worth two points, but I can grab that two points with my card. So let's make sure we get a point here. Now I've only got two extra cards. If I put those into birds and play my card, I swap a green for a black, and I've gotten the lead in birds. And by going last, I got this huge advantage, right? Of course, normally, whoever had the least seats is the most likely to win the election, which is not reality at all. <laughs> but because they have that last play thing, and again, I wish that there was something more going on here uh, than just pure game-like mechanisms uh, in terms of, oh yeah, well, you are the weakest party, so you're most likely to be able to gain. Now, that's great for, uh, for being able to catch up, though. So, you know, in terms of game design, there's advantages to that. It may be too much, we'll see. <coughs> um, okay, so I think we're done with that step. And we go on to the parliamentary election, unless the campaign counts. During the parliamentary election, we actually generate the points. Now, the parliamentary election is the little house on top, which means he has something. Um, when do you play the cards for this? I don't know. But his says he gets to hold. Okay. So yeah, that's, these cards are all, that one's not. That one is an extra seat. Okay. So we get to count our seats. Um, let's start scoring them. And they suggest going from uh, up here first. Now, if I had played one here and one here, I would have gotten three points instead of the four that I got for playing my card as well. So I probably shouldn't have done what I did. But anyway, up here, orange gets four. I don't believe that they get the second place seats as well. That's not specified anywhere. Uh, it's possible that that would be an errata situation. If only one person's in an area, they get all the seats. But I don't think it's the case. The game doesn't seem to uh, apply that way. Red is gonna get two for their monkeys. Blue gets three for the zebra. And black gets one for the zebra. Okay. Over here, orange gets five. And black gets two for the penguins. Uh, well, another cheapie. Yellow grabs five seats. 
Over here, yellow gets six more, and red gets two. Snakes is worth three. Black gets four, and green gets two. Uh oh. Hmm. I don't know where my piece went. Aha. <laughs> I'm using the wrong pieces for everyone. That's what went wrong. These little chairs go here. And I should have had them nearby. Blue is at six. Orange is at nine. Yellow is at 11. And now what did I say green was at? <laughs> Jesus, I don't remember. Green should get two. This is their first seats. And then we come over here, green gets five more, and black gets one uh, for the Poe Bears. Okay. That means if I want, I could play for an extra seat because I have the majority in penguins, don't I? I do. The question is, do I want that extra seat? Is this the time for it? I played for it, but what does it mean? Let's see what the majority would be. 11, 20, 28, 35, 41, 45, which means the majority is gonna be 23 seats. And 23 is not two of us even if I up this. So that vote probably isn't worth much to me. Um, it could end up being important, but without knowing where alliances are gonna fall and without the victory points being kinda in some kind of useful place where I can start, start seeing, hey, where, where are these likely to fall? I don't think it's worth spending my card for that. Other people, okay, now we've counted the points. And now, um, in player order, we remove all the food tokens from the game board and put them back in the supply. Well, player order gets redetermined. So, uh, yellow is first, and he has to lose all his food tokens. Now, he has this, which is happens uh, back in the event phase. Oh, this is interesting. So this happens way over in the event phase when you probably don't have any food tokens in a species. That's an interesting place for that to happen. Uh, I would think that it would happen right now, but no. Okay, so he has nothing he can do. At this point, that, that seems like a mistake almost. Um, I would think it would happen now, but he's gonna lose all his food tokens. And we'll do this in order this time, but I'd probably just exchange them for what you're gonna get uh, normally. Okay, so the next is orange. I'm sorry, that's like gold. Orange is gonna lose all his food tokens and he has nothing to save him any. So his go away. Oh. Uh, next is black. Black has nothing that allows him to save any. So he loses all his tokens. And again, this does not, you know, feel like it's simulating anything in the sense that like, I'm not sure that the food tokens should just come from bribes, but if they do, other things should, you know, they're, they're, there should be something that keeps them there. Maybe they should degenerate slowly or something. It just feels really weird to see them go this way. Now, again, there's 
perhaps gameplay reasons for having them all sweep away. I just don't like it. <laughs> uh, green. Green used up his cards. Or has no cards that help. So all his tokens go away. Uh, that puts us down to blue. Blue has... And this is another one. I can't keep these. I thought I was going to get a donation for grabbing my damn zebras, but no, I'm not. That's almost an impossible card to play. You know what? I'm going to see if the current rules are online and whether or not they've changed the time when these fire off. Because it really doesn't make sense to me that you just lose, that you'd have to have a loyalty card in order to trigger this thing and get your donation. It turns out that the newest PDF isn't even available yet. Um, I thought it was actually available and I just wasn't getting it uh, because of the timing, whatever. The new rules actually aren't compiled yet. Uh, I was told they'd be ready in a couple of days from now. I guess I move a little too quickly. Um, I'm going to make a command decision here because I think this is just wrong. I, I don't think this should be happening in the event phase because what it's saying is whoever has the most food tokens in that species, well, the only people who are going to have those food tokens are people who have chained a couple of cards together. Is this fair? Is this reasonable? I don't know. Um, but since I was directing my pieces based on those cards, thinking I would be getting that donation, that I wouldn't be spending as much as I am, essentially. I'm going to take the food for those as well here. Blue is going to play both their cards, getting a couple extra bucks for their zebras, and they get to keep their snakes. Am I missing something important by doing this? I don't know. Um, I think that if those are happening in the event phase, um, it really requires that you hold on to those cards forever and hope for a lucky combination because you don't have any ability to trade cards or anything like that. So it makes those cards real bones <laughs> if, if they can't be played at this stage during the parliamentary election uh, cycle. And now that gets me to red for last. Red can't play this. I have a, I think that's loyalty. Yeah, so I've got loyalty in the hippos, so I can keep two of my hippos if I play this. And now all the bribes are just gone. Okay. But we have our points out there. I chose not to get that extra point over there that I could have had, and we're ready to form the governments. Now, I mix things up a little bit, much as I do with Republic of Rome. Um, I intermingle discussion, which seems to be allowed. It's during this phase you may discuss freely and make suggestions, along with trying to form a government. Um, in Republic of Rome, it's very easy. The presiding magistrate is able to say, look, let's have a vote on this. <laughs> you know? uh, and it's usually in his own favor to make the, hey, uh, try to get the deal out there. Um, but then he can shush people up and say, look, we're voting. It's your turn to vote. Go. <laughs> you know? uh, that kind of behavior, though, can cr create enemies for you where... Yeah, you know, you're not letting me listen to the other guy. Screw you, man. <laughs> so, um, you can see that as having multiple uh, vectors there. Anyway, our first player here, and there doesn't seem to be any kind of timing limitation here. If there was one, uh, where would you put it? Uh, theoretically, I don't know. Maybe the president would have that kind of power. But 
often they don't. Well, the president often in a parliamentary society, in a parliamentary system, has the right to say, look, will you form a government, you know, and give uh, one person the opportunity to do it. So they may have that kind of uh, uh, power to be able to uh, do things of that nature. So let's look at what we have here. Um, well, we would rather avoid green, and we've got 23 votes. Um, keeping the largest government we can, since there's no ideology, no reasons to work with anyone except how well you doing. Uh, so yellow looks and they say, well, red and blue each have pieces left on the board. Everyone else is probably going to make enough income to be able to put their five parliamentary votes on. So then, you know, whatever extra money might go into the presidency, but I don't know where else to put it. Mm, you know, maybe stock some away for, for lean years. But I think what we want to do is we want to say, why not black and orange? Because between the three of us, we have 28 votes. Well, I would like to take the prime minister because that gets me the most power, but there's a danger to taking the prime minister, which is if I take the prime minister, I may not get the right to um, basically, in order to create the coalition, I may have to say, okay, well, not only am I giving each of you a title, a, a job, but I'm also going to give you guys first choice at the different issues, you know, at the different agenda that are out there. Um, because otherwise, you know, it's the prime minister who controls that. Uh, sorry, this is not him. It's the prime minister who controls that opportunity to create the different uh, the different agendas. And I hope I have these right. That the prime minister is the bow tie, and no, the president is the bow tie. I've got the cards wrong. I think the president is the turtle. Oops. Okay, so we swap these out. He's somewhat less important. The, so actually, this card must be the Prime Minister card. Yeah. Okay. So he actually didn't really want the presidency, but he did not want it either. Um, so at this point, we start discussing, you know, hey, what can I get as Prime Minister? I'm willing to work a deal with you guys where I give you guys each an office. I get the first shot and whoever gets the second shot gets like last choice of office or something like that. Because I do have the first shot at this, but I'm talking to the two people who have the next shots. Um, this guy who doesn't really mind being in the opposition if need be. Although this is not the time to necessarily play victory point cards. Uh, I'm assuming he didn't get his penguins. Oh, he didn't play that. He, he didn't want to play it. So, yeah. So I'm going to make an offer where I get first and I give the next person a uh, second pick, but third office. <laughs> And then black gets the next. So this, we'll see how orange feels about this. Orange is voting no on this. He's like, um, and this is during discussions. He's like, no, I don't want to make this deal with you. Okay. All right, fair enough. How about you, black? Are you willing to be the second person with the third choice of office? No. <laughs> okay, so I'm getting some pretty strong no's here. Can I go down to 11? 21, no. Which means these two players have basically said, you know what, we want not the prime minister to get the first vote. We don't think that's fair. And the prime minister's like, well, that's kind of bogus. Or at least the prospective prime minister over here. And he, 
if he doesn't get to be prime minister, he can swap things out. Um, so maybe he can make a deal with one of these to take second pick, second office. So we'll see if Orange will do that. Orange is willing to do second pick, second office, uh, his choice. And not that he really cares about the office. So now we're at 20 votes and I only need three more. I could offer that to either blue or red. Blue and red are two people I didn't really want to give points to uh, because they're both, you know, they both have votes still on the table. I'm going to offer it to blue because I believe those two in snakes is worth less than the two over here. Although it probably guarantees him the three points for snakes. Oop, I forgot something. Over here in the parliamentary elections, we were supposed to give money equal to the number of seats that each player has. So he got 11 bucks. Orange has nine coming to him. I'm not sure why each player has their own color of money. Black is going to have eight. And you know what? I'm going to pause so that I can do this counting without being on camera. Now, at this point, you know, our gold and orange have kind of come to an agreement. Hey, maybe black chimes in and says, oh, okay, let me in, let me in. No. <laughs> uh, which means I think what we're going to do is, yes, we're going to keep working with blue here. And blue says, you know what? Okay, uh, I'm good with this. And we have enough votes. It's going to pass. And this is what we see, right? Gold, orange, and blue are all part of the government. And the government positions have been handed out. I want to be, uh, I want to be the foreign secretary over here, which is my position. And blue wants to be, I don't know what they are. <laughs> I can't remember the names anymore. Uh, Minister of Defense, okay. And that means I get, shit, I get the lion, which is not necessarily what I wanted, but okay. All right. And I'm going to create um, something to indicate the ordering here. I'm going to say, I promise to take the first, orange takes the second, and blue takes the third. And this is kind of iffy, because blue might well not get shit out of this. Uh, okay. I think we've just finished. Let's see what we get. Um, we have the non-government who's outside while black is the opposition player. Not this turn, but next turn and the turn after, he has the capability to force a, um, um, a vote of no confidence. Now, let me look at this card and see how this is worded, because I can play this during the event phase. And it says there will be a parliamentary election already next round. I don't want to, yeah, I can't play it now, but whatever. Okay, so now the political offices have been handed out. Each government player gets one card, each opposition gets two. And ordering is not specified there. I'm going to keep doing it in player order. Uh, it can be important if there's a reshuffle. So player order, gold is our first player. Uh, 
I'm going to get a couple of cards. And I can put the office over here. Okay. Uh, orange is not... I'm oh, sorry. They only get one card. Orange gets a card. I'm going to keep his office over here too. Um, black will be getting two cards. What does this mean? You swap seats with someone or something? Uh, your party gets the indicated number of seats from the party of your choice. That could be valuable, but the problem is if there's new parliamentary elections, which is what I'm looking at, by triggering this, instead of using my vote of no confidence, um, that one extra vote may not be that important. We'll see. Okay. Uh, uh, who's next? Green is next. They are opposition. So they get two cards. What is this? It's the presidency. That's one of his offices. Remember, you can have more than one. So I put that there. He has a lot of ability to swap things, but no real strength to calling a new election or anything. So maybe that's not too valuable to him. Of course, by doing that, he might put himself in a position where uh, it's enough votes that he'll call a vote of no confidence on it. We'll see. Uh, blue is next. Blue only gets one card because he has an office. And then finally red, who is in the opposition, gets two cards. Okay. And now where are we? All right. There's no possibility of a vote of no confidence at this point, which means we're at the events. Now, an event happens. But the event phase allows you to play your cards. Uh, what's not clear here is which happens first, the event or your ability to play cards, or do the cards just happen in their own state? You know, do they have to happen in sequence, or can they just be played? whenever you like, before or after an event. I'm gonna say that you can do it as you wish. Most games of this nature kind of allow you to flip things over when you wish. However, there are some things here which don't. Um, the draw of the cards, it is important which order they have in, happen in. So it's a value for me to see what the event is before anything happens. And the event is that. How is, that looks like this. What just happened? I think we just got an assertiveness for the prime minister. He gets to implement a goal. And that puts him at one victory point. And the event cards only come up once. There probably aren't a whole lot of each of these. <laughs> so that has now just made the Prime Minister, a less valuable position, perhaps. Okay. Players are going to consider whether or not they want to play any event cards at this point. So, for example, he could play a new presidential election. Is there a reason for that? Well, presidential election triggers things off. It can be bought with just money. I could make a lot of victory points off that card, but eh, we'll just hoard our money doesn't seem terribly worthwhile. Uh, no events, none. He has this one, which would allow him to get a buck if he was in the lead. But remember, I'm not playing these as just event. I'm saying that they happened during the parliamentary election. I could grab two votes, though. If I grabbed two votes, we would have nine and eight is 17 between us. Um, 
gold has already gone. It's not enough for us because we would only have two more rounds before the next election. And 17 doesn't get us up to the 23 that we need. So it doesn't seem worthwhile. I have the feeling that some of these cards are going to be more valuable in a smaller number of players, like four players, for example. I could see this card being a lot more valuable. In six players, chances are that the votes are spread out too much. So he's not going to play this at this point. But he could end up getting a fistful of these and be able to grab uh, some points later. These are the promised things. I'm going to get rid of this one because he, oh, he hasn't taken it yet. Uh, let me just look at others. He could get a victory point. Uh, no, uh, this is, I don't know what the hell it is. That's the party donation. Um, he doesn't have that position yet, even if I was only doing it, even if I was doing it at this stage. He has the capacity to call new parliamentary elections closer. I'm not really seeing that I'm going to get my opposition to work, even if I swap a vote. So, what if we do a par early parliamentary? There'll be a new one next round. Let's do that. I am going to play and push the parliamentary elections up. And that's going to hurt uh, orange and blue who went along with this coalition. Uh, so we look for the parliamentary elections, which should be, <laughs> should have been placed somewhere. Should have been three spaces up the rack, up to here. It's actually getting placed here. So we're not having a long parliament this time. Okay. And does anybody else want to play anything? He could play the presidency. Gets pushed up. Again, I don't think that's terribly valuable at this point. It's not the time to exchange votes because those vo a new parliamentary election resets all the votes. So <laughs> it doesn't do me any good now those things that selected seats are less valuable after that parliamentary election was called. Um, if somebody else had played something like that and gotten a dominating position where they could go into the next, uh, maybe call a vote of no confidence or something, this would be a way to get around that by calling the parliamentary elections at that point. Okay. Implement uh, party goal. Well, I'm not hurting anyone. I'm doing exactly what I said I was going to do by implementing this one. So we're going to implement our party goal. And that's going to get rid of this. And too bad for the other people, but that's part of the price of being junior members in the coalition, unless you can get a promise out of someone. And now, of course, if there had been a promise to say have orange go first or something, gold could have screwed them over. But <laughs> this early in the game, it may be a bad idea to make that kind of um, enemy. On the other hand, later in the game, all your friends are going to abandon you, perhaps, as they try to, you know, grab the win. So you're less like you're more likely, you know, to see the, the, the deals broken at the end. So they become maybe less believable as the game goes towards the end. Uh, and it all depends on how a group looks at betrayals and such not. Uh, if they carry it on to the next game, uh, or if some people just believe in some sort of honor, uh, like unfortunately I do, uh, <laughs> they may not be willing to break a deal even if it's made, you know, at a point where it's less believable. Okay. Uh, and now we go to the end of the round. The round marker moves forward. We're going to have a parliamentary election this time. And we start the next round.
If there's no presidential marker on the next round, start the round with phase 5B, the parliamentary election campaign. Yeah, that makes sense. I see five and I'm thinking, oh, that's gonna be far. No, it's the second round. So yes, we're gonna be starting on the parliamentary election on the next round. And what's gonna be hard to remember is what things people kind of feel like they owe. So like orange and blue are gonna kind of have a vague feeling that, you know, I know it wasn't your fault, man, but we got kind of screwed and maybe we deserve something. Of course, the more important thing is probably how far back are you on the victory point track? You know, that indicates how willing people are to cut deals more than anything else. Um, this doesn't strike me as a game where vendettas and such are going to be all that big a deal, but you never know. Um, it's not all that different from something like Junta, and oh boy, have I seen them, you know, run run in a, in a game like that, or Republic of Rome for that matter. You know, the oh well, you've been patting your own neck, nest. Screw you, man. I'm just gonna, I am not gonna help you save Rome. You know, you you've been getting the best of every deal. It's your job, dude. <laughs> You're the ones who have gained the most from this. Okay. Uh, what I'm going to do is, because I've used up a lot of this uh, this battery, I am going to load this up as the first turn. And I think in later turns, I'm going to spend a lot less time on both the mechanisms as well as uh, the discussion and thinking and everything like that. I just want to give you a little bit of kind of how I'm muddling through trying to figure out how, how the different factions are going to negotiate things out. And as we saw, you know, the first player in discussion was able to hammer out whether or not he had a coalition. Now, it would be a really dicky thing to do if Orange and Blue said, yeah, we'll go with a coalition. And then they voted against him, you know, just to be total dicks, right? But you usually don't see that. You usually see people do come to an agreement and in fact, the person who has the gavel and has the first chance to make a, a, a deal is often the person who gets to get things done. Now, though, with him in the lead, even if he ends up, um, you know, at the beginning of a parliamentary election with the most votes, he's probably not going to be in the position to do that. Um, one thing about getting the most votes is it means you get the most cash back. Uh, you basically get all the cash back for the votes that you've thrown on the table. Well, no, not for the pieces you've thrown on the table, for the votes you managed to capture. So you got to remember, with five pieces, this guy got 11 votes. Make it six for the presidency. So you got like two, two votes per piece, and that means he got two bucks per piece, whereas Orange here for five, only got nine, a little less, and other people did much, much worse. All right, let's send it up after, you know, these kind of maybe irrelevant thoughts. It's hard to tell, you know, this is how we form our opinion. Although I still have no opinion on what to do with these. 